How you doing, Justin here? Today we are checking out the intro solo to Lady Writer by Dire Straits, played of course by the great Mark Knopfler. There's loads of really tasty little licks in this one to steal, so let's get to a close-up and check out how to play it. Really worth noting that this is in C sharp minor. So as we're learning the different licks, see if you can kind of see them based around that chord shape, it'll help you remember the, the different patterns and the note structures there. Although the chords are uh, actually A, B, to C sharp minor, that's what you're soloing over, but just see if you can think about that C minor shape visually as you learn the licks. So we're going to start here with the second finger in the fourth fret of the third string. We're going to play that note and then slide it up two frets and then put some vibrato on. Okay, this first note's coming on the and after four, so if you've got one, two, three, four, and one. So beat one is this note on the sixth fret. Three, four and one with your vibrato. The next note we're playing is the seventh fret of the second string, little finger. Then we play the fourth fret with the first finger, hammer on the second finger into the fifth fret and play that note again. So the next part, seventh fret, all on the second string. This is seventh fret, fourth fret, hammer on the fifth fret, play the fifth fret again. Now if you want to get really fussy, this note, and this last note, I've got a little bit more snap to it. Now, Mark Knopfler plays finger style, so you just want to pick that note a little bit harder. If this is normal, here's with the snap. Literally, just pulling it that little bit harder, it kind of snaps against the fret a little bit. I'm being fussy, but it's worth uh, kind of paying attention to the little bit sometimes, I think. So, with that first little part, we'd have three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three. Four. Okay, so that next little line is the fourth fret. Hammer on the first finger in the fifth fret, flick it off, and then third finger down in the sixth fret of the third string. So that whole first phrase three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four. This second phrase, this is a magical one. I love this. Really, really beautiful line. So we're starting here with the third finger in the seventh fret of the second string for a tone bend. Now you've got to hold the bend and move first finger down onto the fifth fret of the first string. Then you're going to go back to the bend and release it. Okay, takes a little bit of practice to this. This is a kind of a country. Uh, Lovely, lovely line. Now, you know, the doing the bend, holding it, and being able to play that other note, and then release it again, will take a little bit of work. Again, just real careful practice. Make sure you're in tune, hold it there, get the note, go back, and then relax it, and have another go. Very, very common for the bend to relax as you're trying to move your first finger into position there for the bend to either go, I've sometimes said uh, it goes up a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it takes a bit of kind of concentration to, for that third finger to do the bend, stay where it is, and then be able to complete the lick. But like everything else, just practice that kind of thing, and it's such a beautiful phrase. Really, really tasty that one. You can see it really outlining the, really outlining that sound beautifully. So again, seventh fret, first finger sneaks off and does the fifth fret on the thinner string. Then we go back to the bent note, relax. Then we play the fifth fret, hammer on the seventh fret, and second finger in the sixth fret of the third string with a little bit of vibrato. Then there's the next little part of that phrase is fifth fret on the second string, sixth fret on the third string. So that line, three, four, and one, two, 
two and three and four and one, two and three, four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three, four and one, two and three and four and one, two and Really worth practicing a little phrase like that, you know, making sure that you can count along. Noticing that the bend is coming on the and after four again, just like the first note. It's kind of pushed forward a little bit and it really adds to the energy of the song. So when you're counting it, three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three. Okay? That first two phrases now together. Three, four, and one. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and. Okay, now. Again, it would seem logical to use fingers one, two, three, but then you're kind of a bit messed up for the. You'd have to actually use the, the little finger. I think, generally speaking, it's a bit more comfortable to use third finger there, and especially we've got a bend another bend coming up there so I would recommend it does seem to be what the way that Martin Offler would play it as well so first finger in the fourth fret second finger in the fifth fret moving second finger up then we've got seventh fret to fifth fret on the second string flick off and now we've got another bend while we play another note so we're bending the same note seventh fret second string but now little finger is going to be going down in the 7th fret thinner string. Very, very common kind of country. Very common kind of move this. Definitely worth practicing. Both those moves. Even the modern, you know, rock guys like Slash and Angus Young use this. Very, very handy lick to have in your, in your bag there. So, 7th fret, tone bend, make sure you hold it, little finger sneaks in, place the 7th fret, back to the bend, release, 5th fret, then on the 2nd string, and then we're going to play the 6th fret of the 3rd string twice. Let's get all of that first part together now, so 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 1, and Two and three, four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one, two and three, four and one and two and three, four. Last part. Okay, so this time we're starting with the third finger in the fourth fret of the third string. Sliding it up to the 6th fret, then 5th fret on the 2nd string, flicking off to the 4th fret. 6th fret to 4th fret on the 3rd string, flick off. Then 6th fret on the 4th string twice. Another really, really, you can see. See the way it's outlined in that chord shape? Very, very helpful to think about that. Then 4th fret. 6th fret tone bend and then relax it 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 and 3 4 and then we're finishing with a little A major 7th chord there that's the 7th um, fret, 6th fret, 5th fret, 4th fret okay so let's have a nice slow play through that whole intro solo now so starting off Two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two and four, one. Okay, and up to speed. Mm -hmm. 
As you're probably aware, Mark Knopfler plays fingerstyle, and uh, in this kind of song, I don't think the exact finger that you pluck with all of the time is going to be super important. Now, uh, and I'm not exactly sure which one Mark would use for every different note, but I'll give you a quick look at the way I've been doing it, and I would suggest that you find the way that feels comfortable for you. It's mostly going to be thumb and first finger, occasionally second finger, which is kind of the way that Mark Knopfler would seem to play it, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure. So uh, let me just play it real slow how I'm doing it and uh, you can take it from there so three four One thing I will notice is that my thumb kind of tends to rest on all of the strings that aren't being used, and I'm doing a lot of picking there just with the first finger. Now, I'm not sure if that's really good form or not, but, you know, it's most important is what it sounds like and what it feels like. They're the two, well, what it sounds like is the most important factor, I guess, and what it feels like is also important. So you want to find what works for you, you know, and, and a lot of these sort of... Um, I like using the first finger for both because thumb can rest over and, and put a mute. Whereas if I do use different fingers, it's harder to get the mute on that top note. It just kind of feels, it, it, it makes the right sound to me and I think that's kind of important. But again, like I said, you know, you're going to have to find out uh, exactly what fingers you want to use to pick which strings. I'm sure you're going to have a whole lot of fun playing that solo. There's some really tasty little licks to steal for sure. And uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to be looking a little bit more at the, the rhythm pattern uh, and exactly how Mark Knopfler played it. We're going to be looking at the verse and the, uh, and the chorus as well. I'm going to break this uh, video into a few different sections kind of thing. So I uh, hope you'll join me for that next one where we check out that kind of, you know, this nice little rhythm thing. The... <laughs> all of the little fills that go along with that as well. So I'll see you for that very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.